Hello there, this is Dave Allen for Mac 20 Questions and today I want to have a look at an application called Ulysses. And it's a writer's application and it looks a little bit like Scrivener in some ways but I don't think it's quite as developed as Scrivener is. But we'll have a look at it anyway and see what we can do with it. Well first of all we've got this standard mode of working and we've got a uh, console mode of working. So the console mode of working is like the uh, full screen way of doing it where you can concentrate just exactly on the thing that you have in front of you and not be distracted by anything else. So distraction free writing. And also with this here you can stay in the standard mode view but also change the view so that you get rid of some of these things here. So we get rid of the previews and the notes and stuff like that. And you can work it that way so you can see just your writing that way. And you can even do a split view with this too. So there's our split view. It seems to me that the split view basically gives us two views of the same document. So this is the Robo 2 we're looking at now at the moment. And it's the same top and bottom. It'd be kind of nice if I could have Drobo 1 in the bottom. So let's say it changed that there. No, it's changing the screen on both of those. But if it was a long document, I suppose that could be useful. So you could see maybe something at the beginning of your document and somewhere a bit further on in there. Within this document info over on this side over here, you've got all your characters, number of words, paragraphs, and all that sort of stuff in there, which is kind of handy. And you can give it some status. So at the moment it's new. But it could be a draft or it could be a final. Let's put it in there as a final. And the label, well, you can have a label in there. It could be something about characters, for instance. So there's a whole lot of different things that you can do in there to specify how your thing is supposed to look. If I do Command S now to save that, and now it is characters. If I change it again to plot, we'll see a bit more clearly. So do save again. We see that the thing up the top here, telling us what type of document it is, has been changed. Well, I've got this set at the moment, so it gives me sort of the markdown sort of characters. But what I want is I want this to be a header. I don't really need to be thinking about the type of formatting and things like that, but I want to give it some sort of context. So if I do Command-1, that turns it into a header 1 for me. And if I do Command-2, that'll put it into a header 2 for me. And I can choose this word here. I press Command-B and turn that into bold. I'm using the same sort of... Um, things here as I would do if I was using Markdown mainly because uh, that's the way I like it. It didn't come that way, I changed that to suit after I got it. This one here, I can set this one so that it's going to be in italics. You can change these things as well by going to the uh, preferences. So in the preferences we've got uh, your console mode, you can say how you want it to be, whether you want the scroller always on and stuff like that, whether you want to check the grammar and spelling and all that. There's a whole lot of different things there you can do with it. Uh, standard mode, again you get all the different ways of looking at it there and your information there in your info panel. Okay, so here is your paragraph styles. As you see I've got level 1 set up there, the tag is the hashtag and my shortcut is command 1 and same sort of thing for command 2 and level 2. And I can add other ones there too as well. So for instance this new style of mine, I want to have that so it's a level 3 so I'm going to put in the hashtag three and I'm going to call it level three. Let's change that to command four and put this one here as command three. So there's my inline style, start tag, end tag. That's for strong which is going to be a bold tag and this one here is going to be italics and there's one there for important. So let's just close that for the moment. So if I want to have that as important, well it was uh, two of those at the beginning have it and uh, two of those at the end. And let's have a look what happens when I want to export this. Now export you can get to from there. We can get to export from the uh, project menu and go to export that way. Or strangely enough you can do shift command and A. E. Now when you're exporting now this is where the things change. So I can put it out as a PDF format. I can send it out as plain text, rich text format, Ulysses project, web export, word format or as an EPUB. Now this is what I got it for because I thought it would be interesting as a, another way to send out EPUB files. And what at the moment I'm going to do is I'm going to send it out as a web export. And the template I'm going to use for a web export is going to be a WordPress snippet. So for some reason or other, it's showing me here the structure of James Joyce's header 1, header 2. It's giving me an idea what it's going to look like, but I haven't got James Joyce stuff in there. It should be showing me what's in this Drobo thing here, but uh, it will continue anyway and see what happens. So now I'm going to click on Save. 
and say where it's going to go to. I'm going to have got, I've got a Ulysses directory here, folder, and I'm going to click on save. Yes, that's the one I've just saved. And I'm going to click the space bar now and do a quick view of it so to see what we've got. As you can see, it saved it there, and we've got a header one tag there. Really, I should have this saved so it comes in with a paragraph tag. So when I get into Mars Edit, which is my blogging tool of choice, it will uh, put those things in for me there, turn that into a paragraph for me. So that actually works quite nicely. So this time we'll go to Project, Export, and this time we'll take to go out as a PDF document. Why not? That's going to be in bold. And this has got to be in italics. I haven't got any highlights or reworks in there. Importance, we'll have those there underlined. So this should work now. I've put this out as a PDF. Let's click on save. And there's our Drobo doc PDF. Press on the spacebar and we can get a look at it. And we can see that the word that was supposed to be important is underlined. We've got this one here, which is battery, which is the one that's set to be in bold text. And this one here in italics. Here we've got our title of the document. This is our header one. So there you go. We've got exported that into PDF and that works OK. Let's go back into this again. And this time we'll go to project and export. Instead of PDF format, we'll go for... Word format. Not that I'm very likely to use that. Let's change this strong into bold. Let's change this italic style into italics. And I don't know what these do, but we'll put them in anyway. We'll click on them and we'll put a timestamp on there and a label just to see what happens. We'll call it Drobos and click on save. And it's exported out. We'll go into Finder again. And in Finder, there we have our Drobos doc. Let's click on the spacebar, see what we've got. So there you go, we can see we've got some extra notes in there and all the stuff in there is supposed to be in there. We've got our bold, we've got a text which is in italics and we've got this one here and it didn't do anything with that, I didn't underline it, obviously I didn't set that right. And this area over here is for putting your notes in, so quite often you might be writing something, you want to have a look at some notes or some research and you can put those in there, no problem at all. It's not a bad little application this here bookmarks so if I want to get to something quickly so I want to go to this space here it takes me to that button there which is going to be quite handy if you're working on a large document I don't think it's quite as good as Scrivener yet I think there's a bit more work to be done on this here I have tried using it this morning for doing a few things and I did get a little bit confused in a few places when I was trying to save things out and it wasn't saving out properly I may persevere with this here because it is fairly simple to use and it's not bad and I got it at a discount price of $1.99 when it should be around about $9.99. You might want to give it a try. Of the two between Ulysses and Scrivener, Scrivener gets my vote, but Ulysses isn't too bad at all. Okay, this is Dave Allen for Mac Questions, and thanks for watching this video. Talk to you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you've uh, got something out of this video, do click on the like button because it helps my videos be found on YouTube. Bye bye now, be good, and if you can't be good, be careful.